Hey friends, Heather Creekmore here. Glad you're listening to the Compared to Who show today. Today is one of our seven minutes of scripture episodes where I try to take a passage of scripture and talk about it and relate it to your body image and comparison issues in about seven minutes. But I'll just tell you right now, <laughs> scripture is so packed. We're looking at 17 minutes at minimum. Um, so I'll try to loosely keep it somehow related to a number seven. But there's so much good stuff, I think, in what we're going to talk about today. And today what we're talking about is we believe a lot of things when it comes to our bodies, when it comes to health, when it comes to how to take care of our bodies, when it comes to what we should do to take care of our bodies. We believe a lot of things. Why not believe the gospel though? Why not believe that we are already accepted, already approved of, already loved? Why is it so much easier to believe all the things than it is to just believe the truth of scripture? That's where we're going today. I hope you get a ton out of it. And if you do, would you drop a review for the show? In fact, maybe if the show's been blessing you for a long time, just press pause right now and go leave a review for the show. That helps other people find the show and that blesses me so much. So thank you for considering doing that. I also want to let you know that coaching is open. I'm taking a couple new clients this month. And also my book, The Burden of Better is going to be available. Get this, you guys, for a 99 cent download on Amazon Kindle. It's May 1st to like Mother's Day. So just the first two weeks of May and then it's gone. But if you haven't read The Burden of Better yet, can I encourage you go grab it for 99 cents? Friend, this book is about comparison, but it's really about so much more. It's a deep deep dive into God's grace and how God's grace really frees us from a lot of these things we struggle with, like body image and comparison. I think you'll get a ton out of it. Tell a friend to grab one too and read it with a friend. There's questions at the end of every chapter. Even this summer, to find freedom from body image and comparison issues. So go grab it on Kindle before May 14th. Today's show is sponsored by Classical Conversations, the homeschool curriculum that my family's been using for over 10 years now. Are you concerned that your child's current education won't give them the skills necessary to succeed in any area of life? Well, then maybe you want to consider homeschooling with Classical Conversations too. By applying the classical Christian model of education, the Classical Conversations curriculum encourages students to learn how to learn and how to think for themselves so that they can adapt to every challenge life throws at them. Join the over 50,000 families, like mine, in 50 countries who have chosen to educate their children with Classical Conversations. Just visit classicalconversations.com slash compared to who. That's classicalconversations.com slash compared to who and learn more. Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compared to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Well, hey there, I am so glad you're here to listen to this discussion of 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to start just by reading the first part of the passage because I believe it really sets a good foundation for where we need to go today in terms of this discussion around what we believe. So the subtitle in my Bible says, Test the Spirit. So here's 1 John 4, starting in verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the Spirit of 
of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, friends, the connection here might be a little fuzzy. Maybe you're even getting a little nervous <laughs> as I read that. I don't know. I, I might be. But my point with the first part of the passage is this. Not everything presented to us as truth in this world is actually the truth, right? We've talked about this before on the show. I like to say there's big T, capital T truth that comes from scripture, right? That's the truth of God. And really all truth is God's truth. But then there's something that's passed off as truth. This is a little T truth in our culture, right? We talk about my truth and your truth and live your truth. And this little T truth is not grounded in actual truth. I would say it's actually grounded in idolatry, right? Because when I say I'm living my truth, I'm saying that what I believe is true is truer than what God says is true. And so I'm going to go with that. Now, let me push some of you, my friends, a little bit with that one, because you may be thinking, well, I don't do the whole my truth thing. And, you know, I, that's I totally see that, Heather. I would never do that. But let me ask you a hard question. When you think about your body, whose opinion matters most? So I work with lots of coaching clients that are honest with me and they're like, yeah, my husband, he's really okay with it. You know, um, my kids aren't going to like run away from home because they don't like the way mom looks. You know, I've got friends. They're not offended by the way my body looks. And so as we press forward, it's like, okay, well then like, whose truth are you believing? And it's like, well, it's my truth. My truth is my body isn't good enough. My truth is my body doesn't meet the standard I want it to meet. My truth is my body should look like this. And then we have to go back to scripture. And it's like, what is God's truth? Right? God doesn't say those things. Right? God tells you already approved, already accepted, already loved. God's not waiting for you to physically get your act together so he can use you. In fact, I would say that's that's flipped. God's like, hey, I'm ready to use you. And in so doing, watch how some of these issues you have been consumed with for decades will fall away because you're finally on purpose, living for my purpose instead of living for your purpose of body improvement. And oh, friends, I know that might have been a little harsh. I hope you have your seatbelt on today. But I want to share this truth with you because I believe it's the truth that sets us free. I, and I share it with love because friends, we've got to stop believing the messages of this world. As this passage says, the messages that are not of God that are telling us where freedom is found, where joy is found, where rest is found, where peace is found. Those messages that are telling us if you could just get this body, you would have all those things. Friends, that's straight up idolatry, right? So we have to test the spirits as First John 4 verse 1 encourages. And to test the spirit, we have to take these messages from culture and we have to examine them against scripture. So in my book that comes out in November, I do this with a lot of concepts around food and body, right? I think most of our body image issues are actually poor theology issues. And I'm going to talk about that in another show. But we've believed that food should not be satisfying, that that food is dangerous. I, in fact, I, I was writing a sentence on the board. Maybe I shared this on the podcast already, but I was writing a sentence on the board for my students in my homeschool class. And the sentence was, eating is healthy. And immediately I had kids push back and say, no, you can't say that, Mrs. Creekmore. Eating healthy foods is healthy. Or you could say, like, not eating hot dogs is healthy. But you can't just say eating is healthy because we have so fundamentally undermined the concept that our bodies were created to eat. Instead, we've kind of latched onto this concept that maybe there is some magic 
magic way to make it through life, <laughs> eating as little as possible for the sake of having a thin body. And yet we have to stop and say, is that even good for us? No, because God created us to eat. And all the things we talked about in the episode with Tracy Brown, that um, and we talked about the physical ramifications of not eating what it does for our bodies. No, friends, not eating is not healthy. So that's a bit of a rabbit trail and I'm already tight on time, but we have to test every spirit. We're going to get back to the second part of this passage right after this quick break. So first John 4, we're going to start reading now in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we've loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Friends, here's my charge to you today. Do you believe that the gospel message right there, that God loved us so much that he sent his son to die and be the propitiation for our sins, propitiation, that word basically just means the atonement, the sacrifice, like that he took our punishment for our sins. That's how much he loved us. Like uh, friends, like I, if my neighbor got a parking ticket, like, I don't know that I see myself like being like, Hey, can you just give me that ticket? I'm going to go, I'm going to pay it. I'm going to take care of this charge against you. I kind of be like, no. Oh, you know, honey, you're responsible. Like you just go take care of that yourself. And yet God took on so much more than our parking tickets, right? He sent Jesus to die for our sins, every single one of them, past, present, future, even our sin of idolatry, even our sin of believing that the world's truth could possibly give us things that really only Jesus can give us like rest, like peace, like joy, like satisfaction. And so my question for you today, friend, is you've believed a lot of other things about your body. You've believed that your weight is wrong. You've believed that your appearance is wrong, that your size is wrong, that your skin is wrong, that the way God made your body is wrong. You've believed that it's not good enough. You've believed that you don't measure up. You've believed that it should be a lifelong mission for you to try to look better. That was me. Maybe you've believed the words that other people have spoken over your body. And I don't mean to say that they don't hurt and you can just ignore them and just brush them off. No, those are wounds. They're wounds. But friends, you've believed all these other voices, the voices of Instagram, the voices of YouTube, the voices of Oprah Winfrey for a lot of us who dieted in the 1980s, right? Oh, aging myself. We've believed all these other voices pretty effortlessly in a lot of, a lot of cases, right? It's like, oh, I shouldn't eat bread anymore. Okay, I won't eat bread. Because like 12 people said it. And so if like 12 people said it, then of course, it must be true. And oh, look, 12 people had results from it. Oh, well, of course, it must be true. Wait, we believe all this stuff. Why not believe the gospel? Why not believe that what Jesus did for you just changes radically the way you should think about your life, your purpose, and your body. Why not believe that because you are already approved of in Christ, other people's opinions don't matter? Why not believe that because you're already accepted in Christ, that even if those closest to you reject you, you will be okay? You are secure for eternity. And oh, guess what? Jesus had that happen to him too. So he gets it. He understands. He knows what that's like. Why not believe 
that through all of First John 4. Oh, it just over and over again, how much he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Why not believe that you are so uber loved? You, you can walk <laughs> like, I don't know, some of you probably remember maybe the first time you fell in love and maybe felt like he loved you and how you're kind of walking on cloud nine, like you're kind of on this high, like, oh, I'm loved. Ah. Guess what? Even if you don't have any physical person in your life that you feel loves you like that, that's how much God loves you. You can walk around like someone who is loved like someone who is deeply cared for, like someone who is seen and known. You are loved. Why not believe that? You know, instead of believing you got to like eat no carbs and intermittent fast and well, the data says this and the science says this and oh, well, this study came out and it said that if I do this, then my body will look like this. I mean, really, why are we doing all that anyway? Because we want more love. We want more appreciation. We want more acceptance. Okay, we say we want health. Some of you are probably being honest about that. (laughs) Some of you probably need to be pushed a little bit more on that, right? But what's healthier than being loved? What's healthier than taking the stress around worrying and obsessing over your body away? I can't think of anything. So friend, my charge to you today, and I'm going to make it in 17 minutes. Yay! (laughs) My charge for you today is live loved. You believe a lot of things. Why not believe the gospel? And if you want to believe the gospel, if you want to believe that God's truth is the real truth, friend, you actually have to read the Bible. Are you spending time in scripture every day? If you're not, God's truth can't penetrate your heart. The world's truth is going to win. Those messages from culture that tell you you're not enough, those are always going to be loudest. You've got to be speaking back to them. You've got to be taking thoughts captive. We're going to do an episode on that here soon too. But you've got to know God's truth in order to believe God's truth in order to live like it is true. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for listening. Hey, remember, go to Amazon Kindle and grab the burden of better. Actually, I talk about how God's grace helps us to understand that we are accepted and approved of. Like that's a whole section of the burden of better. So if today's message resonated with you, go grab the book for 99 cents. I mean, that's a bargain. You know, now I, I, I'll i tell you, my book strategy is I kind of like to start light because I feel like that's how we develop a relationship. And you, you know, then I can kind of hit you with some of the tougher stuff. So if you feel like it's too light in the beginning, okay, just skip forward a couple pages and <laughs> And you'll find the meat you're looking for. And don't forget, leave a review for this show. I would love that. That would be a blessing to me. Okay, I'm glad you were here. Thanks for listening. I hope something today has helped you. Stop comparing and start living.